Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for, Lord, this time you've given us together, Father, and thank you, God, for your word. We love your word, Father. It's a word that's alive and that speaks to our hearts and that encourages us, oh God. And Lord, I just pray that you do that very thing, Lord God, this evening, that you would encourage our hearts, oh God. Speak to us, we pray, during this time, Lord. We're looking to you. We thank you, Father, that you've given us this time, and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen and amen. I love to uh, uh, thanks, give thanks to the Lord. Um, you know, I'm more conscious of it than I, than I was uh, when I was young. And, um, you know, uh, I was thankful when there was uh, things to be thankful for, but uh, not thankful all the time. How many know how many times or how long the Bible tells us to be thanks, thankful? Does anybody know? All the time. We're supposed to be thankful all the time. And we're going to look at how in the world we can do that. Let me read from Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. Then I'm going to read Psalm 95, verses 6 to 7. The Word of God says this. Come, us, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. And extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. And 6 and 7 read like this. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. How many are happy about that? That we are the flock under his care. Yes, let's give the Lord a hand clap often. What's interesting about that psalm, and there's other psalms uh, just like it, is that it doesn't give us uh, a reason of something that happened to us to give thanks to God. It just says to do it. And then uh, we bow down and worship to the Lord, our maker. In other words, that's the reason, because he's the Lord, our maker. And uh, I just wanted to uh, get into the reason why we should give thanks and it'll help us because giving thanks is something that blesses us. Did you know that God's higher purpose for receiving glory and for receiving thanksgiving from us is so that we can live in the fullness of who he is? Do you think that God needs us to say thanks to him? I mean, even some of us have graduated from... Uh, needing it, like if somebody, have you op ever opened the door for somebody and they just walked on through and didn't say thanks? That happens a lot, especially in New York City. If you want to hear a thank you and, 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 and you, you're not going to hear it, and if you're going to feel bad about it, don't do nice stuff in New York City because a lot of people, they're just too busy. It's not that they mean to be mean, but they're just thinking of something as they walk through the door. They didn't even see you. They didn't notice that you opened it. But I want to tell you, in case you didn't know, that God prescribes and tells us, and it's a command uh, to give God thanks, but he doesn't need us to. He absolutely, how many know or how many think that God needs anything? Does God need anything? Does God need anything from you or from me? God is all sufficient. He is not uh, uh, like we many times emotionally unstable. He, he does not go into a little corner when his people don't give him thanks and sulk like we do many times. God, so, so there must be a reason why he tells us to give him thanks. Just look at Jesus. You remember when he was in, on this earth, I get a kick out of how Jesus was because he would do this amazing miracle for somebody, and then he'd say, by the way, don't tell anybody about it. And I would say, well, that's just like me. When I do something incredible, I don't want anybody to know about it. Right. <laughs> I want to tell the whole world, right? If we were like Jesus and you just heal somebody's leg that or they couldn't walk, and, hey, 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 whoa, 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 you're not paying attention. Look what I just did. He didn't need people to acknowledge that he did it. Because he's God. What does he need? He just does it. He's not surprised about it. 
He go, whoa, look what just happened. He, he would speak the word, and he was sure that it was going to happen. Why? Because he's God. I mean, do you think it would impress him to see uh, uh, somebody's arm who was withered? He once uh, healed a withered, man, uh, a withered arm in a man, and it grew. Do you think he was surprised about it? He created the universe. What's that? That's like nothing. That's like a side thing. For us, it's amazing. We go, whoa. Imagine if we were there when he was forming the stars and the sun and the moon and the sky and the oceans and the lands and the creatures over the earth. And when he formed man, imagine that. We'd have our minds completely blown. We'd walk down, you know, drooling after uh, seeing all of that. We wouldn't even know how to handle it. God is not needy like we are. But it's to be thankful to God is for our own benefit. And the best benefit that will reach in our lives is to learn to be thankful just because he's God. That's it. That's all the reason that you and I should need. We kind of hold it like a little ransom, right? Okay, God, I'll thank you if you do such and such or if you answer that prayer. But if you don't, well, uh, you know, we'll have to wait until something good happens. But we're actually shorting ourselves. And we're going to look into that. We're going to look into why or what it does when we're thankful to God just because he is God. When we're thankful to God just because he's God, it produces a gratitude which unlocks the fullness of life. It produces a gratitude in us that unlocks the fullness of life. Jesus gave us that promise in John 10.10. 10. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they might have life and may have it to full measure, to its fullness. And we wonder why we don't experience that. We do begin to experience when we understand these truths that we're speaking about that the Bible is very clear about, by the way. Philippians 4, 11, 12, the Apostle Paul had unlocked this fullness. He had learned what it was, and he called it a secret. Listen, uh, I am not saying this because I, because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the what? The secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Now, I want you to imagine just for a second, whatever your situation is right now, if you are, uh, have some needs or you have a lot of needs, imagine reaching the secret or learning the secret that the, that the Apostle Paul learned, that no matter what was going on in his life, he was content. You know what that is? That's freedom. Imagine not waking up in the morning worried or, 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 or upset that you don't have this or you don't have that or you don't have enough of this or you don't have enough. Imagine just being content in whatever station of life you are. Tell me that that is not an incredible way to live. But it's a secret to many. We see it when you, if you ever travel to a third world country, if you ever do a missionary trip, why is it that we don't have a tenth of what uh, folks, uh, Christians in, in those countries exhibit as far as joy and peace, and, and they seem to be so much more thankful uh, than we are, and their, their, their gratitude is through the roof over Little things, it's really a humbling experience. How many of you have ever traveled uh, on a missionary trip and know what I'm talking about? It's pretty amazing to see you. you. You can't go and not have your life affected and changed by the experience. But what is it about it? They, they have so much less than we do in this country, and they're so much more joyful. They so, have so much more peace than we do. They're so much more grateful than we are. How could that be except 
that maybe the things that we have aren't in their way for, her, for them to see the truth. They have gone past, if God did love me, he would give me, and you fill in the blank. They've gone past that. They've gone past, I'll serve God if he does this or he does that or he gives me this or he gives me that. They serve God because he is God. They love him because he is God. They are grateful because they know the one true God. Their hearts are full because their hearts are full of the presence of God. And in his fullness, there is fullness of joy. Gratitude to God changes your vision about things. It turns what you have. If you're grateful to God, it turns what you have into enough or, or more than enough, whereas before you didn't see it that way. That's what a thankful heart, a heart full of gratitude does. It turns a house into a home because when you don't have a thankful heart, you're always looking for something else and you don't see the very things that are treasures that God has given us. When God does that and you have a grateful heart, you begin to be grateful for what he has given you right there in your home, the very little that you may have, that you have a roof over your head, that you have a, 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 a husband or a wife that God gave you to share life with, that you have children to thank God for. The Bible says that children are a blessing from the Lord. We begin to see them differently, even though with all the mess that comes with children. Which I accept because I created a lot of mess when I was a child. And it turns strangers into friends and friends into family. That's what gratitude to God does. That's what makes us family. I'm thankful. You know, I was thankful today. I was happy that we were going to be together. Why? Because you're not my friends, you're my family. God did that. And a, a grateful heart. If I didn't have a grateful heart, I would just, okay, I guess we got to do this service. Let me see how fast. Let's cut it from three songs to two. And, uh, you know, let's just say 10-minute thing, and then we'll get out of here. Because we got a lot of eating to do tomorrow. <laughs> how am I going to eat tomorrow? I'm going to eat tomorrow. <laughs> In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to starve myself until that meal because I get upset when there's something good and I start getting full. I get very upset. <laughs> and I'm not thankful then. Anyway, anyway, it produces the gratitude, just being thankful to God because he's God. That unlocks the fullness of life. You want to have fullness of life? Ask God to give you a thankful heart and he creates that in you. Being thankful to God because he's God aligns you with his purpose. It aligns you perfectly with his purpose. First of all, it makes sense of your past. You know, if you don't have a thankful heart, you'll have a very sour or uh, a, a bitter heart because life throws some stuff at you. How many have been through some stuff? Raise your hand if you've been through some stuff. Has everybody, raise your hand again. I should see every hand. And we're not done yet. We're not done. Yes, two hands up there and both feet. Been through some rough, rough stuff. But a thankful heart kind of makes sense of all of that rough stuff. Let me explain myself. What if things had gone differently and everything that you went through, you didn't go through, and it was all nice, smooth, and easy, but you didn't get to know the Lord? What then? Would you be in a better position than you are right now? You've been through some mess. It might be that the very mess you went through made you think about God. Have you been through some stuff? Did you step in a ditch? Did you fall? Did you hurt yourself some? 
Did you, were, at, were you at the end of your rope? Well, what if you weren't at the end of your rope and you had plenty of rope and at the end it was to hang yourself because you didn't know the Lord Jesus? You know, I shudder to think where I'd be and who I'd be if I hadn't been through the stuff that I've been through. I was talking to my sister a couple of weeks ago about something that happened to somebody that had, you know, kind of really hurt me. This was years ago. And, and we all looked at it, you know, as, wow, that person, uh, you know, really hurt him. But, man, he made it through, and, you know, he just didn't give up, and God was faithful. I confessed it to her two weeks ago that that needed to happen in my life. That needed to happen. God knew there was something in my heart that I needed to go through something that would humble me. And that person was the one that God used. And I'm thankful today for that, what, what that happened because it, for, it, it brought me to a place where I had to go on my knees. So I can't be angry at anybody. I have to be thankful that God allowed that to get some stuff out of me that needed to come out. How many say amen? Listen to what Job learned. How many know that Job went through some stuff? I love to compare my life when I'm stuff is, I love to read Job because he always beats me in mess. Always, hands down. So when I think I'm going through a lot, let me read some Job. I feel good. Listen what he learned because he asked for an encounter with God. He asked for an audience with God and he got it. But listen to what he said afterwards, after being through, I mean, some really, really serious things, losing his family, losing his herds, losing his, his workers, losing his health, and, and who knows all what else. Just read the book. But listen to what he says in chapter 42, starting in verse 1. When Job replied to the Lord, then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything, and no one can stop you. You asked who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Now, that's the man who you and I, if we piled all of our stuff together, didn't go through very uh, uh, one-tenth of what this man went through. Yet after God opened his eyes a little bit, he says, you know what? I take back everything I said. I I'm just so thankful to you. I repent of even the way I was feeling bad about myself. Is that amazing or what? It makes sense of your past. I'm thankful. God knew exactly what I needed to go through so that my heart would be humbled and that I would acknowledge him as God. He knew exactly what I needed to, to go through. I don't, I, I don't regret not one thing. The only thing I regret is the times that I didn't listen to him. I regret that. But he even used that. Could you imagine? That's how full of grace and mercy he is. The Bible says it in Romans 8, 28. That he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All things means, by the way, all things. All things. Some bad things. You get in God's hands, he'll work it for your good if you let it. If you get mad and walk away, okay, another lesson to learn. Let's take a lap around the desert like the Israelites did. I don't want to go laps for 40 years. I want to say whatever comes. I want to be like the Apostle Paul. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every circumstance. It makes a whole lot of sense of your past. It also aligns you with your purpose for today, your present. Isaiah 43, verse 6 and 7. The Lord speaking, bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, that's us in here too. We're called by his name, aren't we? Whom I created for who? For what? For my glory, who I formed 
and me. He's calling everybody. He says, come from afar, from where you are. Come, everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and who I made. But you see, his glory is for you to enjoy. He doesn't need me to give it to him. It's already his. I can't give you something that's already yours, can I? All the glory belongs to God. I don't give him glory. I just acknowledge his glory. I, I am in agreement with creation. I'm in agreement with the word that's, trans, that's throughout all the earth, that all the earth is filled with his glory. I'm just agreeing with it all. Amen. The psalmist in Psalm 86, 12 says, I will praise you, Lord my God, with all of my heart, with a thankful heart. I will glorify your name forever. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, the apostle Paul admonishes us this way. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen? Whatever you do. Like I said, giving glory to God brings joy to you and to me. C.S. Lewis, who a uh, famous writer, uh, said this, in commanding us to glorify him, God is inviting us to enjoy him. You hear that? In commanding us to glorify him, God is inviting us to enjoy him. God is fully enjoyable. Did you ever think of God in those terms? He is enjoyable. You enjoy his presence when you come into it, when you recognize it, when you learn to go through the veil that was cut, that was rent from top to bottom, when you learn to walk in there, it's a fully enjoyable experience. In fact, it's so enjoyable that you don't want to leave. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go in there. Because the way is open. The blood of Jesus made a way for us to go into the very presence of God. And Psalm 1611 says that in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hands are pleasures forevermore. And that's the experience that you and I should have. But if, if you don't have a thankful heart, you won't make it in there. Your, the, your heart, the condition of your heart is what makes you see what you can't see now. You see, because God is spirit. And those that worship him and love him and are thankful to him must do it in spirit and in truth. You can't do it with your mind or get all intellectual about it. You got to lay all that down and experience him with what's in here. This is what he's after, not for himself, but for you and me so that we can enjoy ourselves in the presence of God. And by the way, that's our purpose to be and enjoy the glory of God and to show that glory to others. So it aligns us with our, our purpose and it makes us understand our past. It aligns us with our purpose today and it aligns us with our purpose for tomorrow. God has plans for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, a very famous verse, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Man, have I lived that verse. Not that I deserve to live that verse. Hear me out. God is amazing. God takes all of your mistakes and he teaches you and he doesn't give up on you. And, and, and he, he, he gets you to go in the direction that he planned for you. And then you realize, my goodness, he had a plan for me all along and it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. I wonder what would have happened if I would have found out earlier about it. But that's okay. We're here now, thank God. Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we 
are God's handiwork. That's how he sees me and you. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. There are things that you are yet to do that God has prepared. And as you do those things, they bring joy to your heart. Because obviously he doesn't need us to do anything since he could speak and the thing is done. What does he need me to do if he spoke this world into existence by the power of the spoken word? He, he, he speaks to things uh, as though that were not and makes them to exist. And the things that exist, he, he counts them as foolishness. This is the God that we serve. So to be thankful to God, just because he's God, it produces a gratitude that unlocks the fullness of life, and it aligns you with your purpose, your purpose. And finally, to be thankful to God because he's God is healthy for your soul. It is so healthy for your soul. It cures pride because thankfulness leads to humility. It keeps you from the insanity of thinking that you're all that. I was going to ask, how many here have ever thought that you're all that? But nobody's going to raise that. <laughs> how, how do we ever get to that insanity? Right? I mean, we could get, we could be walking down the street, and, and you know, you, you can appreciate this more in Brooklyn where there's a lot of high-rise buildings. My dad lives in one that's 23 floors, three sections, 600 families. You can see the whole city from his balcony. And they have these coverings on the walkways in case a brick falls off. A brick, brick's hat fallen off. So we're all that. And you got a lot of money and you're driving a Mercedes Benz or something else. And you're walking down the street and a little old brick comes loose off a building. And there you go. You're done. <laughs> that was it. You're no more. We are so silly in thinking things. God blesses us with things or, or gives us a little information. We have a little knowledge with the brain that he created. And we're, hey, did you, did you see the way I think? Did you see what's in there? Well, did somebody give it to you? Did somebody teach it to you? You know, what, what, what are you so proud about? Being thankful that God keeps you from being arrogant about your own accomplishments. How many know that your accomplishments uh, uh, are due to what God uh, has done and ha what has he has allowed? If you don't believe that, let's go to the very basics. You're breathing because he wills for you to breathe. The breath that you have, he's giving it to you. And he can take it away. But if he takes away my breath and yours, too, hopefully everybody in this building, we're just going to be taking new breaths up in heaven with him and breathing in holiness. Hallelujah. Amen? He absolutely owns me, whether I acknowledge that or not. You know, if my car could talk, and it would talk back to me, and I own you. And my car says, no, you don't. Yes, I do. Watch. Open the door. I get in the car, and I, okay, let's do something now. I'm taking to you where I want to go. That's God. He owns us. He made us. He's our maker. How many say amen? And being thankful creates, uh, I mean, uh, comes against a very, very dangerous thing in us, which is pride. It hurts us and hurts so many other people. It cures self selfishness. Being thankful to God takes your eyes off of the kingdom of self and puts it on the kingdom of God. It prioritizes the things in that kingdom instead of the things in your kingdom. You know that we build little kingdoms, you know, based on what we like, um, when we like it, how we like it, if we like it. And God 
is saying, I have something much better than what you have. God's kingdom is an amazing kingdom. The kingdom of self is very small. How many have learned that? It's just a little mirage that we have. And we get very withered and small when we, all we think about is ourselves. You know, we're insane that way. We, every, every time that you feel offended or hurt or unhappy with someone, what has happened is that your pride has been hurt or your ego has been hurt. You know, even if somebody tells you the truth about something, Let's say you're being stubborn, really stubborn, and somebody says, hey, you're stubborn. You get offended. Why do you get offended if it's true that you're stubborn? But that's the way we are. It's our self. It's our ego. It's, what, it's part of our sin nature, and being thankful comes against that. It cures worry. Being thankful to God cures worry just because he's God. It combats worry because what you're doing is you're reinforcing the truth that is this. God is good, and his love endures forever. So what do you have to worry about? I'm worried. Well, here's why you don't have to worry. Because God is good, and his love for you will last forever. And that love will carry you through anything and everything. How many say amen? You're also reinforcing when you're thankful to God just for being God, you're reinforcing his promise to take care of you. If you read in Matthew chapter 6, he talks about how the, the, the lilies of the field are clothed and how the birds of the air have things to eat. And he says, if, if God takes care of them, what are you, what are you worried about? But if, when you're thankful to God, it, it reminds you and reinforces God's promises that he would take care of us. And we have nothing to worry about. How many say amen? It cures a critical and complaining spirit. Psalm 9.1 says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. If you are telling and speaking about God's wonderful deeds, you have no time to complain or feel bad about yourself. Why? Because you're too busy giving thanks for God's wonderful deeds. That's where your mind is at. It's on his amazing deeds, not in what you don't have or what you could have had. And I love uh, uh, Habakkuk chapter 3. I love this scripture because it is so real. And if we can get to this point in our lives, we will be the better for it and the blessed for it. Verses 17 and 18. Listen, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. <laughs> Listen, I don't have cows and sheep. In fact, I didn't see too many of them until I moved to Damascus. But I have known what lack is. Oh, yes, I have. I have been through some very, very lean times in my life. But you know what? It was during those lean times, because... I've also been on the other side of that. I've had times when I had plenty. And the interesting thing is that God's word is true. <laughs> because when I had plenty with my wife, and we could do anything we wanted, and we had the toys, we had the boat and the motorcycles and the, car, and the nice cars, and we could travel anywhere we wanted and do whatever, fancy restaurants. It was the worst time of our life. And I kind of knew it because I was a Christian a long time. I asked God to give a correction. And boy, did he ever. And now all of a sudden, I was on the other side of the coin. And we were counting change to buy milk. Eating uh, 
pastina. Does anybody know what pastina is? It's these little, little, tiny pasta things. And you just cook them up and you put some butter in it. I love it still. <laughs> but that's what we were eating. And, but we had a thankful heart because God had healed our relationship, which was failing when we had too much. And when, when, during the lean times, it made us look to God, look at our hearts, see everything that's wrong, repent, turn, and all of a sudden fall. I don't say fall. Love each other like the Word of God commands. With nothing. When there were no cows in the barn or sheep in the pen and no grapes on the vine, yet we were able to rejoice in the God of our salvation. Not because we were psyching ourselves out, but because we had true joy. Because you got to know, you got to know that nothing else produces joy. Nothing else satisfies our soul. You got to know that. You, you, you're going to look, if, you're gonna, if you haven't stopped looking, you're going to look until the cows come home. And someone just told me that the cows don't come home. I was very shocked to hear that. The cows never come home. You have to go out and get them. <laughs> But you're going to look and you're not going to stop looking because, <laughs> because there's nothing out there that will satisfy. You weren't made that way. It won't satisfy your soul. It won't. You think it will if I just hit the lock. No, it won't. God is the one. He is the joy of your heart. He's the only one that can fill the soul that he created. Your soul was made to fellowship with God. That's why you're here. Listen, we're being thankful. That, that's what it was curing. This is what it produces. It produces a positive attitude. You ever see a thankful person? I love to be around thankful people. Take a thankful person and th th uh, take a complaining person. Who would you rather be with? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they kind of raise you up with them. They're thanking God. Hey, what do you, you know, you, it, how, how about this? They're thankful and... You can't figure out why because it's, it doesn't look too good from where I'm standing, where you are. Does that humble you or what? Have you met people like that? They're going through some dark times, and yet they're thankful. I was just thinking about a dear sister who goes to another church uh, who's facing a really, really, uh, it, it doesn't look good as far as her physical body with the cancer. But you know what she was? Thankful. Thanksgiving coming out of her heart. What is that? That's supernatural. That's a heart that's full. That's a heart that's not afraid even of death because God can't conquer death for us. She knows it. She receives it. She's living it. God may heal her or he may not, but she's thankful. How many say amen? How many want to be that thankful? I want to be that thankful and have people uh, benefit from my positive attitude. And that's another thing it produces. It produces a positive effect on those around you. When you're thankful, it's contagious. You're teaching people why uh, or how to, 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 to be full of life. It's to be thankful for whatever God gives you or being thankful just because of who he is. It produces a positive effect on your physical health. Listen, when you're thankful, your body, it, it, it responds to that. Thankful people are healthier people. That's just, just do a study, on a scientific study or a medical study on people's attitudes of their hearts and how they respond to treatment. They do a lot better than people that are bitter and angry or just depressed. It's good for your health. It produces an attitude of rejoicing. You rejoice in the Lord. You wake up and you're thankful. It causes joy to come into your heart. It produces spiritual fullness, the fullness that Jesus was speaking about. It creates purity of heart. Your heart becomes pure like the heart of Jesus. You remember when he was facing the multitude, 5,000 men without the women and children. And there was nothing, nothing to feed them Time to panic. But we're talking about the creator. He knew. He says, okay, what do you have? Five loaves and two fish. 
What did he do with it? Give it here. Raise it up, and what did he do? He gave thanks. And that thanksgiving that he gave multiplied the very little. And everybody was well fed. We're talking probably over 10,000 people. And they picked up 12 basketful of what was left over. Creates a pure heart. And finally, it grows your faith. You want to grow in your walk with Christ? Ask God to give you a thankful heart. You will grow like never before. You'll get unstuck from where you are. You cannot have a bitter heart and think you're ever going to learn anything else or see anything from God's Word. We need to be thankful. And I want to close with Psalm 118.1. Because I'm not even talking about being thankful for what God has done. How many have a lot to thank God for, for what he's done in your life? Things in the past. Times that you needed him. Times that you were in trouble. Times where the provisions were low. Times when you were sick. Times when you didn't know where to turn. Times when you were lonely. And God was faithful. Raise your hand. But I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about giving him thanks because of who he is. He's a precious God. He's an amazing God. He's a loving God. He's a God full of glory who lays down his glory for his creation. Just that. Start there and end there. And yeah, you, you're going to have to be thankful for a lot of other things because he, he's an amazing God. He's a good God. But park yourself there because things will come down the pike. Things will happen. And if we don't move from there, we'll continue to have thankful hearts. And we will be the benefactors of that. We will be blessed because of that. Psalm 118.1. Let's read that together. Would you help me with this final verse? Let's read it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let's read it again. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let's give the Lord a hand clap offering. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. We're grateful, oh God, this evening, oh God. We bless your name, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, your people give you glory and honor and praise, oh God. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you that you're the creator. We thank you that you're our heavenly father. We thank you, God, that your attributes are beyond, Lord God, what we can think and apprehend, oh God. Thank you for being who you are, oh God, and revealing it to us, oh God. We rejoice in you, Lord God. We rejoice in you tonight. Hallelujah. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Oh, may your people never wait until something called Thanksgiving Day to think of giving you thanks. May we be thankful, oh God, for the minute we get up, oh God, that you woke us up and we live to see another day, that we will be thankful for that, thankful for the very breath that's in our lungs. Thank you that we can move about freely. Thank you that we could gather, Lord God, without hiding in this place, Lord God, to worship you, to worship together the God of our salvation. Thank you for roofs over our heads and for cars to get us back and forth, Lord God, for the food that's on our table. Many of us ate a lot of things today. We're thankful for that. God, for the clothes that we came in with, you, Lord, that, that's your provision, Lord Jesus. Things that we take for granted. Thank you for each other. Thank you for this family, oh God. Thank you for this church. Oh, God, thank you for our husbands and our wives and our children, oh, God. Thank you for people that love you, oh, Lord, God, that we can be encouraged by. And thank you for the plans, oh, God. You, you plan to bring us together. You knew that we would be here tonight, oh, God. Lord, help us to have thankful hearts so that we won't miss out on one thing, God, that you have planned for us. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus.